Say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Well, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Our text is, as Pastor Shai, we mentioned just a few moments ago, taken from uh, today's gospel lesson, words of Jesus, words with which uh, we're, we're pretty familiar. And, and very simply it reads, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. This is our text, your family and friends in Christ Jesus. Amen. There's a great story that's uh, been sold, told some time ago about these two guys. Uh, they were uh, making their way through the woods, and, and as they were wandering in the woods, they, they came across this, this hole. And, and the first one said, boy, that hole looks really deep as he threw a stone and said, I want to see how, how deep it is. And, and, and they both listened. Nothing. Well, not to be denied, the second one says, we, we got to figure out how deep that is. And he found uh, a stone about the size of a football or a rock about the size of a football, threw it in the hole, and again, they kind of listened and nothing. Well, not to be denied, the, the second one said, hey, we, we need to find out how, how deep that hole is. Look over there in the weeds. Uh, there's a railroad tie over there. Let's go work that out of the ground. Let's throw it in and, and see if we can hear it finally make some noise when it hits the bottom. So they went and they got this railroad tie and they, they threw it in. And again, they listened and nothing. However, suddenly, shortly after they threw that, that in, uh, out of the nearby woods, a goat appears. And this goat it's, it's running like the wind, and it rushes right towards those guys, and then right past those guys, takes a leap in the air, right down the hole. The two guys couldn't believe what it was that they just saw. They stood there in disbelief, and shortly thereafter, a, a farmer comes out of the woods and spots those two guys standing there and says, either of you guys seen my goat around here? One of the men replies, oh, you bet we did. It was the most extraordinary thing we've ever, we've ever seen. It came running like the wind and it jumped and went right down that hole. The farmer said, no, nah, that couldn't be my goat because my goat was chained to a railroad tie. <laughs> that, <laughs> that poor goat. It, it was tied to something that pulled him down, uh, that pulled him way down. Well, that, that sorry story was to eventually get to this question that I want to ask you here this morning, and it simply is this, what are you tied to? Because in reality, that's one of the most relevant questions that all of us really need to answer and, and be asked, and that is because everybody has something that is pulling on them. What is it that's pulling on you? Are you tied to your job? Tied to your family? Are you tied to a comfortable lifestyle? Or are you maybe tied to drugs or alcohol? Or are you possibly tied to Christ? Again, today's text simply says in John 15 by Jesus, I am the vine, you are the branches. You see, with these words, Jesus is essentially saying, you are tied to me. You draw your strength from me. I am the one who sustains you. You are connected to me. I am the vine, Jesus says. You are the branches. So the, the question that just naturally follows is why? Why is it so important that we are connected to Christ? Well, isn't it so that we would then live fruitful lives? So that we would ultimately live productive lives? Again, Jesus says in John 15, remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. In other words, as we are connected to Christ, we then will be able to live fruitful, productive, and even joy-filled lives. Again, 
Jesus tells us why in, in John 15, this time in verse 11, where he said, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Now, interestingly, Jesus tells us how we are able to live those, those fruitful uh, productive, joy-filled lives in John chapter 14 and 15. And I would recommend all of you with, with your uh, devotions later on tonight, personal or with your family, page through those chapters of John's account of the gospel. And there he says in John chapter 15, he says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. You see, that is the formula for staying connected to Jesus. He also tells us in John chapter 14, verse 15, he says, if you love me, you will obey what I command. In me meaning that what we really want to do is to follow that formula that God has given us to live these lives in his holy word. Because that's the case. It's important then that for us to live these productive, fruitful, joy-filled lives that we do in fact and indeed stay connected to Jesus. It reminds me of a story that I read a number of years ago about this church in Kansas, uh, and it's a true story, where uh, they were replacing the sidewalk that led up to the front of the church. And as they were replacing that sidewalk, a, a woman who had a very small child went up to the trustees and asked if, if she might be able to have her child come and, and put its feet in the cement. And surprisingly, the trustees agreed and said, yeah, go ahead and do that. But the whole uh, idea behind that, the, the neat concept by having that child place their feet in, into that cement was to send a message that this child from the very beginning of its life was pointed in the right direction. It was pointed towards the church where that child would learn about Jesus Christ and him crucified. And it was also to serve as a great reminder to all of us that throughout our entire lives, it's important that we continue to be pointed in the right direction, always keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. However, just because we attend church doesn't mean that we are connected to God. Now, it's true, it's a, it's a, great, it's a, a, great, it's, it's a great concept, but there's no guarantee to it. It's a great idea that we do that, and we should. Let's look at it another way. If you love someone, if you really love someone, doesn't a part of them live in you? Don't you begin to see the world through their eyes? Uh, if you really love them, don't you start to absorb some of their values and, and some of their attitudes? To the point where even when, when they are away from you or you are away from them, you, you carry a piece of that individual uh, within your heart that your life, that it, it really bears the imprint of their influence. And that's what it really means to be a part of the family of God as well. You see, we are to carry a part of him within us in everything that we do, in every place that we go, in everything that we say throughout our lives. And so, back to that initial question, what are you tied to? What are you connected to? Are you connected to Christ does his spirit live and dwell within you? Can, can others see Christ in you? I certainly hope so, because it is crucial that we remain connected to Christ. And here's the thing. That, that connection, that work, that all began for you and me right here at the font. For at the font of, of, of holy baptism, that is where we were connected to. That is where we were, were tied to Jesus, where we were cleansed and, and where we were forgiven and where, where we then were given a new life in Christ, where the Spirit of God lives within us. And many of us here, uh, we, we were made that connection when we were infants. Some of us, as we were children, 
And a few of you, even as adults, and and I'll tell you this, it doesn't really matter when that connection took place, when that baptism took place. It is the exact same hand of God that is taking us and enjoining us to Jesus, that we grow in him and that ultimately he grows in us as well. Again, because he is the vine and we are the branches. Now, Did you catch that in today's first lesson? I hope you did, as our DCE kind of made mention of that in the children's message today, that in that first lesson, ultimately we heard a little something about baptism. It's a story that we all kind of know. It's a story about the Ethiopian eunuch and how God worked uh, to bring him to the waters of holy baptism and also ultimately bring him to that life that he so desperately needed. And, you know, as we read that story, as we know that story, it, it all sounds so simple. It all, it all sounds so easy. But I'll tell you this. It probably wasn't always that way. Because as we have heard that story, as we have read that story, it really doesn't give us any indication whatsoever what that eunuch had been through up to that point. That story tells us nothing about the hardships or the struggles that he endured or the challenges that took place in his life. What was it that, that brought him to this point where he was baptized? Was his an extraordinary story? Yeah, probably in many ways that it, it happened in some ways, but, but in reality, it's, it's, it's no more extraordinary than yours or my story. How God, our, our Heavenly Father, works in our lives through the working of the Holy Spirit, through His Holy Word, through His servants, through the water connected to the Word to connect you and to keep you with Jesus. It's not always easy. But in the end, we, just like that eunuch, uh, we too will walk away rejoicing. But the thing we also need to realize and understand as we are talking about this, that, that the work of the font does not end at the font. We do not begin our Christian life uh, when we are baptized at the font and then we are left on our own to handle life ourselves, to make the best of it, uh, left to to reach our potential all on our own, left to see if we are eventually going to be able to make it and cross that finish line that leads to heaven with Jesus standing there waiting for us. No, that's not the way that it works. You see, the hand of the Father, the hand of the the, the father vine dresser, if you will, continues to work in your life, in your heart, to keep you in life that he has given you. His desire is to, to keep you connected to Christ because it is a life, it's a life that sadly far too often we, we end up wandering from, isn't it? Far too often we end up drinking the wisdom of this world instead of the wisdom of Christ that is found in his word. Far too often it is so much easier to grow into the ways of this world instead of living and growing in the ways of Christ. End up ending up branching off into different directions contrary to Christ and, and his life where we become, uh, how could I put it, to wild branches if you will or maybe even calling ourselves uncontrollable branches, maybe. Branches that that probably, most likely, should be cut off, like our gospel says, and then thrown into the fire to be burned. But the good news of the gospel message for us here today is that rather than receiving exactly what it is that we deserve, we find that Jesus is the one who ended up being cut off in our place. We see that take place on the cross. For there, when Jesus was on the cross, he took all of our sins, he took all of our wildness, he took all of our uncontrollability and rebellion and our unfruitfulness, and he took that upon himself, being cut off by his Father for us, where he died and where he was ready to be burned. But, He ended up not being burned. Rather, he he roared back to life at the resurrection. The fires of hell could not consume him. He is victorious over them, and the bonds of the grave could not keep him. The penalty of sin could not enslave him. And so, in victory, he pays your debt, and the tree of life lives again. 
And as we are reminded in today's gospel lesson, apart from him, you can do nothing. Because apart from him, we are dead. Dead, lifeless, dried up branches. But abiding in him, being tied to him, we not only have life, but we also have his promises that, that will indeed produce fruit. You see, being connected to him, he will work in you and he will work through you as well, producing fruit, fruit of lips that confess his name, the fruit of love that loves as he has loved, because the key is not what you have done, what you have accomplished, what you are able to do, but it, it is, the key is what Christ has already done for us and connected to him. His love then becomes our love and his compassion becomes our compassion and, and his life then becomes our life to lay down for the sake of others so that we all would be able to live with him in heaven for eternity. So today, today I want to encourage each and every one of you to stay tied to, to stay connected to Jesus. And as you do, you will experience his love and commitment and blessings, being reminded that apart from him, you can do nothing, but that with him, we have everything we need. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which far surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen.